see if we can finally get this to work here. Come on. Stay on. Come on. Stay on. All right. Oh man, I really apologize about that, guys. Just having, like I said, some really bad weather down in the Keys here, having a very poor connection. Man, it is windy as crazy down here. I don't know if that's affecting this connection or what. Usually don't have this problem. But nevertheless, was a problem and made a couple of adjustments and looks like we're back online here. So hopefully that we stay online. And again, I apologize for that inconvenience. Guys, again, my name is Captain Mike, host of Florida Sport Fishing TV, and welcome back to our weekly live seminar series. We missed the last couple weeks. We've been out filming shows and it's really tough when you're out filming all day on a Thursday and then, you know, to prep properly and come back and do one of these live events, you know, just too much on a single day. We don't know when we're coming back, from, you know, to the dock. So we have to miss a couple of weeks, but we're back. And that's what's important here. And we're back, you know, with a really, really good one here tonight. Now, a couple of real quick public service announcements and then we'll get going. Again, guys, if you've missed any of our weekly seminars from the past, you can certainly catch them in our feed on Instagram here on our page. Uh, they're also on our YouTube page, floridasportfishing.com forward slash YouTube. So you can catch the seminars there along with the previous 10 seasons of Florida Sport Fishing TV. So a lot of great content there. Uh, we're currently filming our 11th season we're working on that now down here in the keys putting together some absolutely epic shows really really cool stuff coming your, your way season 11 debuts in july on bally sports uh formerly fox sports i've mentioned that in the past it's now just a new name it's called bally sun sports uh, but the same channel 402 uh, same network, same, you know, all of the same schedule. Like I said, just a new name, but make sure that you check us out. Um, and I've got another really big project in the works. I don't want to say too much about it. We're going to announce it in July. Really exciting stuff. I'm really fired up about it. Been spending a, you know, a lot of time and effort on this, and it's going to be absolute fire. So look for that in July. And of course, you'll hear more of it down the line. Now, if you're just joining us, you know, or, you know, if you've been with us before, I want to remind you that our weekly live seminar series here, we always started off with a real-time Florida Keys fishing report. That's what we get into. We talk about, you know, different fisheries down here just to kind of give you a heads up as to everything that's going on down in the Keys. But keep in mind, it's just a summary. It's a few minutes summary of the fisheries that are going on down here. And obviously every day is different, right? Every day that you're out on the water is different, the conditions are different, um, but at least this will give you a place to start, give you something to look for, um, and let you know, you know what you should be getting dialed in for and what you should just kind of stay away from. So without further ado, let's go ahead and get into that. And then we'll get right into our topic of conversation tonight, which is the life and death of bull dolphin. This is a really, really cool one. I know you're going to love this, and I know you're going to pick up some information that you may never have heard before, so it's going to be really, really cool. But again, let's get into that fishing report. So for starters, big news down here, tarpon fishing is on fire. We were out, as a matter of fact, recently filming a show on tarpon fishing at Bahia Honda. Uh, probably saw a thousand tarpon. I'm not exaggerating. In the time we were there, hooked a few, landed a couple. Uh, really cool stuff. You know, some of them will get you under the bridge and you got to make some evasive maneuvers, you know, in and out of the bridge. At one point, we actually had a couple guys jump off the bay boat onto the bridge to go over, under, all kinds of crazy stuff. Um, but that's tarpon fishing at Bahia Honda. But one thing is for sure, they are there, okay? Remember the tarpon at Bahia Honda, there's some permit mixed in with them and it's all about crabs. The crab is king at Bahia Honda. Seven mile bridge, further to the east up in Isle Morada, you're looking at mullet, okay? Mullet, a live mullet's gonna be your top bait. Speaking of permit being mixed in with the tarpon at the bridge at Bahia Honda, 
The permit fishery is still really, really strong out on the rubble piles, out on the wrecks and the you know deep reefs, anywhere from around 90 to 110 feet. That's kind of your zone, all right, out there. Um, and that's all crab fishing, crab, small crabs on three quarter ounce jig heads is just an ideal setup. Um, that's pretty much what everybody does. You can do it on a circle hook with a split shot as well, but I don't know if anything beats that big jig head with a crab fished over that structure. Those permit out there in that deep water, they're spawning. Uh, of course, the fishery's closed. It's all catch and release, so be careful with the fish. Uh, but they're a tremendous amount of fun on 20 pound spinning gear. Um, just a trophy fish. And if you've never caught a permit, now is the time to do it on those offshore spots if you've got a bigger boat and you can't get on the flats and you can't you know, fish in any of that shallow water fishing out in the deep on the bigger boats, like I said, now is the time. Now, I should just kind of pause for a second and tell you, now's not the time to do shit. Excuse my language, because it's blowing 30 plus. And I can tell you that I was all around Marathon today here in the Keys, and 99% of all of the charter boats are just tied to the dock. Nobody's fishing. Handful of guys are just fishing some shallow spots inside, around some bridges, you know, um, but, Nobody's fishing offshore, really, really nasty. A couple of guys went off yesterday. Uh, I think maybe there were a couple early this morning, but it's just really gnarly out there. So, you know, you're not gonna be fishing offshore right now, at least not for another couple of days. Looks like finally at the latter part of the weekend, it's gonna lay up a little bit, but today, tomorrow, nasty. Uh, still offshore on the reef, yellowtail snapper fishing is good, real good. As long as you've got that moving water and current, that's real important. Um, you know you need that, so the yellowtail fishing's good. We're not seeing a lot of the big mangroves yet, but they're coming. They're working their way from the bay out to their spawning grounds, out on the reef and anywhere from 40 to 80 feet of water. And June, you know, as June approaches and progresses, that's really going to be the key period to get in on those big mangroves. And I'm not talking about the you know, 12 to 16 inch fish. I mean, the big ones, four to eight pound mangoes. Um, this is what everybody waits all year for when it comes to mangrove fishing. The key to catching them big ones is nice, big, fresh live baits, like a, a big pilchard, um, a pinfish is absolutely awesome. A ballyhoo plug makes a great bait as well. They'll even eat a whole ballyhoo right on the bottom, a live ballyhoo. These fish are voracious. They're the biggest mangroves you'll see. So make sure that you're prepared for that. Like I said, that's coming up. There's a few out there now, but not a tremendous amount. There are some mutton snappers mixed in with the yellowtails on the reef. Not uncommon to pick off some muttons. And certainly on the wrecks, you're going to find some nice size, you know, mutton snappers in the 12 to 16 pound range on some of the wrecks offshore in 150 to 250. In that range, there's some muttons out there as well. Uh, black grouper, right? Grouper season's open. I've been seeing a lot of nice black groupers. You know, these fish, range of depths. You could hook a nice black grouper in 30 feet of water or 130 feet of water or 230 feet of water. So, you know, a wide range there. The key to those black groupers is a big live bait. Let me throw some at you. How about a big mullet, right? There's millions of big mullet here throughout the, the Keys right now, and it's pretty easy to catch them. That's a great bait for a big black grouper is a big live mullet if you can't get anything else. Ballyhoo, a whole live ballyhoo, great bait. Pinfish, great bait. Smaller snappers, great bait for the black groupers you know juvenile yellow tails and, and and lanes and stuff like that those black groupers will just suck them down so the key like i said is just a nice enticing live bait fished on some heavier gear that's going to get you a shot with those with those bigger black groupers okay keep that in mind further offshore deep dropping when conditions allow has been good. There's been, you know, I've seen some really nice big gray tile fish for the guys that are deep dropping, even manually cranking around 600, 650 feet. Um, and I'll tell you what, a lot of these gray tile fish down here in the middle Florida Keys are some of the biggest I've ever seen. You know, I, you don't see any of those small little gray tiles down here like you did up off Broward County, Pompano Beach, Fort Lauderdale. 
Boca, not down here. Here it's all big mama jamas, you know, slabs. So be prepared because some of these gray tiles are really nice quality size fish. Mixed in with the gray tiles, you know, don't be surprised if you're looking for that gray tile and snowy grouper shows up, right? Because a lot of times they'll be intermixed together. So we had actually a couple of really nice snowy groupers right before this blow. Um, late last week on thir Thursday it was. Beautiful conditions. Fished a spot in about 675 and two real nice snowies. Now, of course, we left the spot because you're only allowed one. Um, and it hurts just watching them float away, you know, no matter what you do. So don't clean up the spot. Remember that. Uh, but nevertheless, that's a good fishery as well. Even further offshore, the queen snappers, barrel fish, good options for guys that are deep dropping. If you go out to the humps and you're catching the black fins and the dolphin out there and you want to change your pace, you want to mix it up, you want to drop baits to the bottom, that's what you're going to find. That's what you're going to look for out there um, are those queens and, like I said, the barrel fish mixed in as well. And then, of course, there's the dolphin bite. Right, because let me tell you something, over the last few weeks, this dolphin fishing down here in the Middle Keys is just blown wide open, wide open. First, we saw a few fish come through, and now it's, you know, I don't want to say a slam dunk, because there is no such thing as a slam dunk in fishing, um, but pretty damn close to it. Guys that are running offshore are finding fish, you know, anywhere from on the shallow side, 280, 275, 280, to 900 to 1200 feet and anywhere in between there. The key to finding those dolphin offshore is to look for the birds, to look for the weed lines, but especially the birds, look for those frigates. And when you see those frigates working, boy, they're on top of the dolphin, that's for sure. Get within range, um, throw some live baits out, nothing beats a live ballyhoo. Pilchards, of course, work. Certainly you control through the area but nothing beats a live value. That's, that's really the key down here for these dolphins. And keep them around the boat. You know how that works. You hook one, keep it in a rod holder, hook another one, etc. You know, do everything you need to do to keep them around the boat, and you should be able to limit out uh, a lot of schoolie size fish, you know, flippers, fish from three to eight pounds, that kind of stuff. And, of course, occasionally you're going to find a bigger fish, you know, mixed in there with them. Um, but understand that the abundant schools of dolphin are going to be those schoolies, right? They're not going to be uh, the big giant gaffers, so to speak, which leads us right into our topic of conversation tonight, which again is the life and death of bull dolphin. Now, this is really an exciting topic. It's something that I'm really excited to, to talk to you about. And if you're expecting a full-on fishing seminar on how you catch big bull dolphin, well, this just isn't going to be it, okay? That's not what I have for you tonight. We're going to talk about tackle, for sure. We're going to talk about baits. We're going to talk about, you know, that kind of stuff. But listen, if you're a dolphin fisherman, and if you've ever been dolphin fishing, which I think everybody has, certainly if you're tuned into this, you've been dolphin fishing, you know as well as I do. Come on, you can't wake up in the morning and say, hey, I'm gonna go offshore and go dolphin fishing and specifically target big giant bull dolphin. No, you're going dolphin fishing, right? And some days you may come across schoolies, some days you may come across slammers, gaffers, all different size fish throughout the day on different types of debris, etc. You know, it's very, very challenging for anyone, I don't care how good you are, to say I'm gonna specifically go out there and only target these big, big dolphin because I'll tell you what, they can show up anywhere. You know, there's, there's reports, you know, up the East Coast of Florida fishing 280 feet of water and catching a 73 pounder and 280 feet of water. Then there's, you know, could be the next week, the next month, whatever, a guy's out in 2,000 feet of water and catches a 55 pound bull. So they could pop up anywhere at any time. That's the truth of the matter. And you know that's the truth of the matter. So the trick to catching those big bull dolphin is not specifically to look for them, but to be ready for them at all times. Because you may only get one shot in a lifetime at a fish that's 50 plus pounds. 
And when I say bull dolphin, I'm not referring only to trophy size fish, 50 pounds or more. Obviously bull dolphin could be five to eight pounds is still a bull dolphin, but that one fish of a lifetime, that coveted 50, right? Everybody really wants to catch that 50 pound dolphin. I do, I can tell you that, right? That's something that you're putting up on your wall, baby, for sure. You know, is that 50 pound dolphin and even bigger. So you've got to be ready for those. But let's, you know, let's talk a little bit more about the life and death of dolphin. So where does it all start? Where does life begin? Well, life for a bull dolphin begins, obviously, with a cow dolphin. Now, female dolphin are amazing creatures. Amazing. At a very, very young age, they start to spawn. And they spawn every other day in good conditions, every other day, laying up to 200,000 eggs. So you can do the math, right? Every other day, 200,000 eggs. The vast majority, well, I don't want to say the vast majority, 99.9999999999999999999999999999999999999999999999999999999999999999999999999999999999999999999999999999999999999999999999999999999999999999999999999999999999999999999999999999999999999999999999999999999999999999999999999999999999999999999999999999999999999999999999999999999999999999999999999999
is to master farm raising dolphin because they believe that dolphin is the future of feeding farm raised dolphin is potentially the future to supply the national and global demand for fresh seafood. Why? Well, think about it this way. Dolphin, it's recognizable everywhere by everyone, right? You go anywhere around the United States and tell people, you know, you want a fresh dolphin sandwich. And some people call it Mahi Mahi, which is the Hawaiian name, by the way. Some people call it Dorado, which is the Spanish name, but it's a dolphin fish. That's what it is, a dolphin fish. And it's recognizable everywhere by its appearance, uh, by the name, and certainly by just being a really good, neutral, white flesh fish that could be prepared in so many different ways. So it's a perfect you know, substitute for a lot of the other farm-raised fish that are out there. Additionally, it grows incredibly fast. So what they did is they went out, hook and line, charter boat, caught some dolphins. That's where it all starts. And they put them in a tank and they put one bull dolphin, a male, small one, three pounds, three pounds in a tank. And for one year, literally 365 days, they gave this dolphin absolutely perfect conditions, perfect water temperature, clean water, but more importantly, they fed it non-stop. They gave it an absolute never-ending buffet of the finest seafood any dolphin could ever want. Mackerel chunks, squid chunks, sardines, everything. They're filet mignon and lobster practically to this one dolphin. And just really vitamins, minerals, everything. No steroids, but vitamins, all kinds of stuff. In one year, that three pound dolphin reached 52 pounds, 52 pounds. So you may be sitting back right now going, what? That's right, 52 pounds. So he grew about 50 pounds in a single 12 month period. Now that is not normal for wild dolphin. Don't think if you go out there and catch a 50 pounder, he's a year old. This fish was in ideal conditions, had unlimited food source. So it's the exception, it's not the rule. But nevertheless, if you wanted to know how fast they can grow, that's how fast they can grow. So we're back to our baby bull, who's now growing rapidly. He's being chased by everything that's out there, including any size dolphin that's bigger than he is, because dolphin love to eat dolphin. And it's not that they love to eat dolphin, it's that dolphin love to eat fish. And juvenile dolphin, are an easy target because there's so many of them and they're swimming around everywhere around them. So they're an easy target and a great meal, nice nutritious meal, easy to catch. Um, and that goes on, by the way, throughout their entire life cycle, big dolphin eats small dolphin, which is why you're never gonna find 30 pound bull dolphin swimming around with a three pound peanut, okay? It's not gonna happen. There's not gonna be a school of peanuts swimming side by side with a 30, 40 pound bull because he's gonna eat them, okay? He's gonna eat them. If they're anywhere near each other, he's hunting them and is going to eat them. He's not just hanging out with them, raising them. So dolphins tend to swim in schools and packs of fish all their own same size, okay? For that reason, obviously. Nevertheless, he's growing rapidly. He's being carried by currents. He's avoiding predation by everything that wants to eat him, and he's eating everything he possibly can. And he's growing fast, really, really fast. About two pounds per month, okay? Two pounds a month is the average that a dolphin will grow. Now, where does our bull dolphin go? Let's just assume that he was you know, hatched off of the Florida Keys here or South Florida somewhere. Where does he go? Well, he follows those currents, right? And the Gulf Stream current is actually pushing him or carrying him or persuading him northward up the eastern seaboard, up the east coast. And he's actually working his way to the Sargasso Sea. Now, if you wonder what the Sargasso Sea is, it is a giant area of sargasm weed. We all know what sargasm weed is, those wonderful weed that we find floating around out there that holds so much life. 
Well, there's a big patch of it called the Sargasso Sea, and it's floating around the middle of the North Atlantic Ocean, okay? And it's a lot. It's a lot of, lot of weed. That's where all of our weed comes from. It breaks off the Sargasso Sea, and it eventually makes our way, you know, to our coastlines. Now, the Sargasso Sea is bordered by four different currents. On the westerly side here, right, where we are, is the Gulf Stream. We all know that. And then, of course, on the top side, okay, on the top of the Sargasso Sea is the North Atlantic Current. And by the way, all of this is flowing clockwise, okay? On the east side of the Sargasso Sea is the Canary Current. That's what it's called, the Canary Current. And then as it continues to flow clockwise, you have the North Equatorial Current on the bottom of the Sargasso Sea. However, it is a giant loop. And all of these dolphins that are migrating up the coast, including our little bull friend, are going all the way up the coast and they are getting into the Sargasso Sea. They're following it all the way around. That's a massive journey coming down the opposite side and then eventually working their way back up the coast. It's a giant loop. Now, while it seems like a tremendous distance, understand that the average dolphin will travel on average 25 miles a day okay 25 miles a day that's the average that a dolphin will travel how do we know that tagging studies that's how we know that tagging studies now of course you're gonna have some dolphin that hang out in a particular area for longer and you're gonna have some dolphin that move even faster there have been dolphin that you know have been reported over a hundred miles away in a in a single 24 hour period so it's just an average but 25 miles a day so our little buddy now he's small still but he's getting bigger very very fast okay he's growing rapidly because he's eating everything he can and he, he's still so small he may not be able to swim at 25 miles a day yet but he's certainly getting there and he's getting there quickly okay very very quickly and while he's swimming all the way up the coast and around the Sargasso Sea, he's also continuing now to avoid predation by even other predators. Number one predator of dolphin are, of course, billfish. Sailfish eat juvenile dolphin all day long. Marlin, we all know, love juvenile dolphin, okay? A swordfish will eat a juvenile dolphin. Heck, dolphin bellies is one of the best swordfish baits there is out there. Um, Nevertheless, billfish love dolphin, and so do sharks, especially mako sharks. Mako sharks' primary food source is dolphin, okay? So they love dolphin. They'll catch them. They'll eat them all day long, every day. So this, this poor guy, man, he's being really just, uh, you know, constantly being hunted by everything that's bigger than him. It's a fishy fish world out there. And then, of course, there's you and I right? There's the recreational angler who's out there chasing dolphin as well. So for a single fish to avoid being caught by other fish, billfish, sharks, frigates, you know, all of the birds from above and anglers like you and I who have modern technology on our side. And then of course, even commercial fishermen in different places, you know, it's crazy that even one does survive. But our buddy, he has survived. He's an incredible predator. Like I said, he's got this incredible ability to swim so far, to grow so fast. And because he swims so far, he's exerting so much energy. That's why he has to eat so much. He's got to refuel constantly. And I'll tell you, dolphin are one of the most amazing fish with probably the most diversified diet of any game fish that's out there. I have absolutely opened up dolphin on the fillet table and found a, such a wide array of food in, in their stomachs, ranging from tiny little trigger fish and stuff the size of my pinky nail, I mean, little, little stuff, all the way on to eight pound dolphin inside a big slammer dolphin and everything in between. Bonitas, crab, shrimp, I mean, they're masters at, at eating everything. They can change their skin tone, their colors incredibly fast. You know, we all relate dolphin to being green, right? 
But if you've been out there, which of course you have, and you've gotten into a hot dolphin bite, sometimes you'll see them, they're blue. They're as blue as that water. They're like chameleons. Other times, well, you know, they're as gold as possible because they get into that sargasm weed and they shake it and they literally will feed right in that weed trying to dislodge crabs and shrimp and seahorses and anything at all, turtles, I mean, anything that they could possibly eat, they will. Okay, absolutely an incredible fish. So as that bull dolphin is working its way down the coast, like I said, he's continuing to get bigger and bigger and bigger. By the time they get back along the east coast of Florida, the Florida Keys in the east coast, you know, that journey could have been a year, right? It could have been an entire year before he eventually makes it back here. And by now, he's 25 pounds. You know, so fish in the 20 pound plus range are a year old, under good conditions. That fish is a year old. When you start to get to 40 plus pound fish, that's a two year old fish, okay? Two to three years old. And then once you break that 50 pound mark, you're in that not even three years, okay? So it's very, very likely that a 50 pound dolphin is not even three years old. Okay, which is just absolutely unbelievable. It is the fastest growing fish out there. Really an incredible fish. So how do you catch them? You know, how do you persuade these dolphins? Well, first of all, these big bulls, and I say big because the cows don't get as big as the bulls. All of the dolphin, 50 pounds or more, are bulls. They're males. Unlike a lot of other fish species where the large largest are females, that is not the case with dolphin. Dolphin, the largest fish are males. They're also very aggressive, very territorial, and you're very, you know, it's very unlikely that you're ever going to see big bull dolphin together. Why? Because they're territorial, not of the wide open ocean, but territorial of their cows, of their harem. So it's very common to see a bull dolphin and a cow or two or three or four, okay? Those are his girls, they're with him and he'll fight for them, okay? You're not gonna see two or three real big bulls and one cow, it just doesn't work like that in the fish eat fish world out there, okay? The big ones are males, they're territorial, they have their cows, their females, their harem, and they're spawning with those fish over and over and over. And those are the, you know, like I said, that's his fish. So they're often solitary, these big bulls, or you may find big dolphin in, like I said, pairs of the bull and the cow. Everybody associates that. They're like, oh, I got a nice cow. Where's the bull? Where's the bull? Or the other way around, right? Because you know it's very likely to see those two together, the bull and the cow. Okay, but don't look for many big bowls together because that's very, very rare if it ever happens at all. Okay. Now, remember what I said, these fish can pop up anywhere, anywhere. There's no one particular zone, one particular depth where you could go and specifically target big dolphin. There's guys that catch them right on the edge kite fishing with goggle eyes or pilchards. There's guys that catch them trolling, you know, with artificial lures, chuggers, feathers, all kinds of stuff, you know. Not, don't little ballyhood, you know, feather lures like this are just killer on dolphin, all sort, all sizes of dolphin, including the big ones. And then there's guys that, you know, will fish out there with like a 20 pound spinning outfit, a lot of fresh line, diamond line, real important, but it's gotta be fresh. And will sight fish, they'll run and gun. Especially here in the Keys, really common if you're looking for these big dolphins is to run and gun. Is you're running around a lot, you're burning a lot of time, a lot of fuel, but you're running around looking for fishy water, especially the birds, the frigates, birds working. You get within the area, as I mentioned earlier, and then you throw live ballyhoo out and hope to entice the fish. And it's not uncommon that a real big one just pops up. Sometimes you just see them. You know, there'll be a big dolphin just cruising right below the surface. And certainly the guys uh, with the tower boats have an advantage there to be able to see those fish, get in front of them, 
throw a bait, try and persuade them. Uh, sometimes, usually, they'll eat, and sometimes they won't. But just be prepared because a big, big bull dolphin puts up a hell of a fight. And to land that fish, it's not a wham bam, thank you, ma'am. Slow down, pal. You're in for a serious battle, especially on a 20 pound spinning outfit, even a lighter 30 pound conventional outfit. And by the way, on, you know, on the spinner, I'm fishing 40 pound fluorocarbon leader diamond presentation. That, that's what I fish on my spinning outfits when throwing baits at dolphin. Hook size is gonna vary, you know, on the VMCs, they're live bait hooks right there. I know that's backwards for you, but it's just a VMC live bait hook. On the smaller baits, it's gonna be a 5-0. On the bigger baits, like a whole ballyhoo, or even a big mullet, it'll be a 7-0 hook. Um, but even at 5-0, it's a smaller hook, but you're not bending it. It's an incredibly strong hook. Um, but I have to stress, when that shot presents itself and when you do hook a big dolphin, and you're gonna know when you do, because of course that sucker's gonna jump and you're gonna be like, oh my God, look at that! And everybody's gonna be flipping out, you know. Do you clear all of the other lines if you have any out there and focus on that one fish? Hell yeah. You know, if it's a big one, if that's a really big slammer bull dolphin, I suggest you focus all of your efforts on landing that one fish because opportunities like that don't happen every day, okay? They really don't happen every day. Catching, you know, fish in the 20s, not uncommon. 30s, really quality size fish. 40s, it's like, whoa, that's a big dolphin. But 50 and over, holy moly baby, that's a monster. Okay, so when you hook, a, and, and I'm not saying that you have to wait until you find that 50 or bigger, um, because keep in mind, there's been a lot of big fish, well over 50 pounds that have been caught. A lot of fish in the 70s. The state record, I think, is 80 pounds, but certainly a lot of fish in the 70s that are caught. That, that's a, whoo, that's a, just a giant, giant dolphin. Um, fish in the 60s and the 50s, big, big fish out there. They're not one in a million. They're probably one in 100 million, you know, or 50 million, or I don't even know what the odds are, but the odds are crazy that our baby bull dolphin made it for three years, you know, avoiding all of everything that's chasing them to finally reach epic proportions. And to finally be that trophy giant bull dolphin, he beat the odds until he met you or me, right? He beat the odds, but then he ate our bait, whatever bait that was, if it was a troll bait, if it was a live bait, and of course, you know, like I said, a live ballyhoo, he's gonna find that very hard to resist, very hard. When you do hook that fish, clear the lines, get ready for a long fight, and take your time. He's not gonna spool you, you're in a moving boat, you're not anchored, regardless if you were drifting and kite fishing, or if you were trolling, or if you were running and gunning, you're not anchored, you're gonna go chase that fish, okay? So you, you have mobility is on your side, so you're in no rush there, and no, no compromise of being spooled. He's not gonna take you to the bottom and get you hung up like groupers and snappers, because dolphins just don't do that. To escape, they don't go down. They go up or away. That's what they do. So, of course, it's not uncommon to chase these bigger fish to try and close that gap, okay? You don't want to go up on them too fast because you don't want any slack line, okay? And, of course, if you have a big belly and a lot of slack, easy for that fish to throw the hook. So, of course, make sure that you keep that line tight. And sometimes that may mean moving the boat toward the fish or away from the fish, depending on the angler, right? If you've got an angler that's having a hard time of really comprehending how to really keep that line tight, the guy at the wheel may be kind of nudging the boat away from the fish a little bit just to make sure that that line really, you know, stays taut and there's no slack line there. In any case, you've got to tire that fish out. Big dolphin will fight to the very, very end. And let me tell you, toward that end, you know, once they get on their side sometimes, you're talking about a really big 
fish that's laying on its side with a big broad head, it's hard to lift that fish up, right? It's hard. And if you put too much pressure, pow, zing pow, you're gonna pop that fish off, tackle failure. But really that's angler failure because you put too much heat on them. So slow it down. And again, I don't care if it's the 20 pound spinner that you have, you know, the cast it fish that you're seeing, if it's a 30 pound trolling outfit, you know, obviously, if you're trolling for marlin or big billfish and you're fishing with 50 wides loaded with 50 or 80 pound mono, that's a different animal altogether, right? And you hook a big dolphin, you can just beat the crap out of them. Listen, I've been over on the Pacific Coast. We were throwing back 30s and 40s, throwing them back because we were only looking for those 50s. But we're fishing marlin tackle. Okay, and targeting blue marlin. And you've got these giant uh, dolphin that are eating these big mole craft chuggers and that are eating live bonitas, but you've got the tackle to handle them. It's a different animal altogether. Here, that's not what we're doing. We're out there dolphin fishing, trolling. We're fishing lighter gear all the way around because we just don't see that many of those bigger fish. So we don't go out there geared up for 40 or 50 pound dolphin. We don't do it. Otherwise, catching everything smaller than that would be boring. You would just be cranking them in, and there would be no sport to it whatsoever. Because again, the bulk of the fish that you're going to catch are going to be in that 5 to 20 pound range, right? We all know that. But you've got to be ready when that chance pops up. Not only in fighting the fish properly, but make sure your gear is proper. I cannot stress enough how important fresh line is on your reels. Make sure your leaders are not chafed. I've talked about all of this so many times before, and I'm going to drill it into your head until you have nightmares about it. Every time, you know, feel your leader. If the knot doesn't look right, cut it, retie it. If there's any abrasion on the leader whatsoever, cut it, retie it, because you don't know if that next bite is going to be that mama jama, that slammer that you've been waiting for your whole life. You know, finally eat your bait or your lure, and you blew it. You blew it because you were lazy. You blew it because you weren't listening to me when I told you a million times to check your tackle, make sure your drag is set properly. You may think it's a joke, but it's really the person who's going to be laughing is me, not you. You're going to be crying when you lose that fish. So take what I'm saying to heart, okay, because it's important. And, and like I said, that one fish may only come across once in your lifetime. So be ready for it. Nevertheless, we're fighting it. We're still in that fight because remember, the name of this is the life and death of dolphin. So we've talked of bull dolphin. So we've talked all about the life. We've hooked them now, and now we're talking about the very end and closing the deal. Okay, because it's not easy to close the deal on a big giant bull dolphin. So you're fighting them, fighting them. The guy at the wheel is communicating clearly with the angler, understanding at all times where that line is, what angle that line is at. Is the fish deep? Is the fish on the surface? You know, is he off to the port? Is he over the starboard bow? Where is he? And he's obviously handling that boat properly. As the fight is ending and coming to a close, what's gonna happen is that dolphin is going to be swimming. He's gonna be under the surface. You're applying constant pressure, slowly persuading the fish closer and closer to the surface. Not these crazy motions, up and down, up and down, up and down. You're asking for trouble. Nice, steady pressure, short pumps, just easing that fish up the nest. The boat is moving in the same direction as the fish. The fish is now over here. Boat is moving. You're moving in the same direction. Because if you stop the boat, the fish is going to keep going. You're not going to, you know, you're not going to slam the brakes and turn them and bring them back to you. It's not going to happen with a dolphin that big. Small fish, easy peasy. Big fish, no chance. So as he's swimming away, you're moving the boat parallel. And look what's happening. Right? I'm coming closer and closer. So logically, I'm constantly thinking I need to close this gap right here because at some point, somebody's got to stick them. Somebody's got to bury that gap in that fish when that shot presents itself. And remember, you may only get one shot. Make it a good one, okay? Take that shot. Everybody says go for the head. Yeah, I don't disagree. Go for the head. But if you got a body shot and that's the only shot you have, Go for that body shot, okay, because you may not get another shot. So, you know, kind of play it by ear there. 
whoever now is on the gaff, if it's the guy that's on the wheel that, you know, if there's two of you on the boat, guy that's on the wheel jumps off, grabs a gaff, or of course, if there's somebody else, obviously, like I said, you're shooting for that headshot. That's the best case scenario, but be prepared. You stick that fish, a 40, 50 pound bull dolphin or even bigger shakes his head, he'll rip that gaff right out of your hands. Don't underestimate the strength of a big giant dolphin, even at the end of an hour long battle, okay? He still has more in him, okay? I promise you he's got more in him. So much so that when you eventually gaff that fish, it's gonna be challenging to lift that big fish up and in the boat and be careful when you do because he's gonna be flipping out. You throw that fish on the deck and he's gonna go apeshit. He's gonna go crazy. Excuse my language if there's any kids out there, but I'm telling you that dolphin's gonna go crazy. And it's not uncommon for a big dolphin to flip right out of the boat. It's happened. Watch YouTube videos, they're pretty funny. Okay, it's happened. Don't let that happen to you. Open a fish box and put them right in the fish box. Let them calm down. You know, don't beat the fish in the head with a baseball bat. I hate when people do that. It's cruel, it's, it's disrespectful to the fish. Whoever thinks that's cool, log off right now. I don't even want you watching my shit, my stuff. Excuse my language, okay? Be calm about it, but you know, methodical about it. Don't hit the fish with a baseball bat. Like I said, it's cruel. Get the fish up in the boat. Put them in a fish box, close the lid, or put them in a big cooler, if you have a big cooler on the boat, big frigid rigid or something, and sit on it. Sit on the lid, because I'm telling you, they'll pop the lid off and flop right back in the water. And they'll probably be the worst day of your life that you just spent an hour battling a 50 pound dolphin, finally got them in the boat, you're jumping for joy, and the fish jumps back out of the boat and <laughs> gets away. I mean, Oh God, if that ever happened to me, I don't, I don't know if I could ever forgive myself. But anyhow, so be real careful, you know, with that. Let the fish calm down before you get them out and start high-fiving and taking pictures and all of that good stuff and calling everybody you know and go, no, oh, I'm coming back with a swab, you know, but that's how excited you should be because I'll tell you what, the odds of catching a giant dolphin like that, as I mentioned earlier, are one in tens of millions, okay, to, for a fish to have made it to that size. And now you understand its life cycle. You understand what that fish has to go through and what that fish has to avoid in order to finally be caught by you. Okay, and you got that shot at that fish and somebody else may have in the past and they blew it and he escaped, busted off, they missed them, whatever. One of a million things could have happened. Okay, but you got them and you did everything right. You put that fish in the boat and I'll tell you what, that's the fish of a lifetime. So that's gonna wrap it up tonight, guys. Again, I really appreciate you tuning in. Um, I'm real sorry about that inconvenience at the beginning with losing all of that uh, reception there, connection, I don't, you know, whatever, crazy stuff. Um, if you missed any part of this or you wanna catch up with it again, like I said, by tomorrow, it will be on our feed here at Instagram. It'll also be on our YouTube page. Hopefully this wind calms down sooner rather than later and you get out there and you too have a shot at one of these giant dolphins. There's been some really big fish that have been caught down here in the Keys, fish that have eclipsed the 60 pound mark already. And they're still coming, they're coming. So your shot.